Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take some time today to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, in case you haven't heard already, you might like to know it was just yesterday morning on Sunday, August the 25th, that's when the IDF responded to reports that Hezbollah was preparing to fire a massive amount of rockets and missiles into northern Israel. Rather than waiting for the attack, well, the IDF launched a preemptive strike in order to destroy the Hezbollah targets before they could be used against the state of Israel. According to one IDF spokesperson, Daniel Hagari, the IDF was able to act in self-defense after identifying the Hezbollah terrorist organization as preparing to fire missiles and rockets towards Israeli territories. Here's how he put it, and I quote him here, In a self-defense act to remove these threats, the IDF is striking terror targets in Lebanon from which Hezbollah was planning to launch their attacks on Israeli civilians. This follows more than 6,700 rockets, missiles, and explosive UAVs fired by Hezbollah at Israeli families, homes, and communities since October the 8th. Yeah, think about that for a moment. Hezbollah has been attacking the northern region of Israel since the day after the October 7 attack, which was carried out by Hamas. According to these recent reports, they were about to launch another massive attack just yesterday morning. Daniel Hagari also explained the situation in this way, and I continue to quote him here. Hezbollah's ongoing aggression risks dragging the people of Lebanon, the people of Israel, and the whole region into a wider escalation. Israel will not tolerate Hezbollah's attacks on our civilians. We are operating in self-defense from Hezbollah and any other enemy that joins in their attacks against us. And we are ready to do everything we need to defend the people of Israel. According to Hagari here, the IDF is now ready to enter into full-scale war with Hezbollah and with anybody, anyone else who, who wants to help Hezbollah with their attacks on Israel. And you might be interested to know here that Hezbollah was actually preparing to use long-range missiles in an attempt to destroy the Mossad headquarters in central Israel. And it's for this reason that the IDF responded to this intelligence by dispatching at least a hundred Israeli Air Force fighter jets to target and destroy thousands of Hezbollah rockets in southern Lebanon. According to Western intel intelligence sources, the IDF's preemptive strike was successful in neutralizing long-range rocket launchers that were set to target central Israel. And it was Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who confirmed these reports. He did this by declaring this yesterday, and I quote, This morning we identified Hezbollah preparations to attack Israel. In consensus with the defense minister and the IDF chief of staff, we directed the IDF to initiate action to eliminate the threat. Well, there you have it. Hezbollah was preparing to use short and long-range missiles to attack central Israel, and the Israeli Air Force was sent to destroy their rocket launching sites. Prime Minister Netanyahu also celebrated this victory. He did this by declaring, and I quote, What happened today is not the end of the story. Early this morning, Hezbollah tried to attack the state of Israel with rockets and drones. We directed the IDF to carry out an intense preemptive attack to remove the threat. And then he continued, the IDF destroyed thousands of short-range rockets, all of which were designed to attack our citizens and our forces in the Galilee. Also, the IDF intercepted all of the drones that Hezbollah launched at a strategic target in the center of the country. That's right, the IDF. Uh, they, they carried out this preemptive strike on Hezbollah targets there in southern Lebanon. And, and, and afterwards, the Lebanese terrorists then launched more than 200 projectiles into Israel and yet to no avail. They were stopped in their tracks by the IDF. Prime Minister Netanyahu went on to warn the leaders of Lebanon and Iran about the, the possible response that, that they're thinking about carrying out. And, and he did this by declaring this, and I quote uh, Netanyahu again. He says, Nasrallah in Beirut and Khomeini in Tehran, they need to know that this is an additional step in changing the situation in the north and returning our residents securely to their homes. And I reiterate, this is not the end of the story. In other words, Netanyahu is completely committed to ending the attacks uh, from Hezbollah so that the Israelis who have been displaced from the northern border can finally return to their home. 
What this means is that the IDF is ready to make this happen by any means necessary and yes, even a full-scale war. Here's how Defense Minister Yoav Gallant put it in a statement that he posted on X just yesterday. And I quote him here, he says, We will use all the means at our disposal to defend Israel. We discussed the importance of avoiding regional escalation and working together to ensure Israel's defense as well as regional stability. That's right, the Defense Minister of Israel has warned the enemies of Israel that they are prepared to do everything necessary to reestablish regional stability. It's for this reason that they carried out yesterday's preemptive strike on southern Lebanon to send a clear message. Foreign Minister Israel Katz also posted this statement yesterday on X, and I quote him here, Israel is confronting the axis of evil led by Iran, which has the explicit aim of destroying Israel. We do not seek a full-scale war, but we will do whatever it takes to protect our citizens. In other words, Israel would rather avoid full-scale war with Iranian-funded access of evil, and yet they, they aren't willing to continue enduring more October 7th-style attacks. And it's for this reason that they are ready to enter into full-scale war with those who have determined to wipe Israel from the map. At the same time, it should also be noted that Hezbollah has spent the last 10 years creating a network of tunnels under southern Lebanon, which includes military operations and weapon storage. And, and, and it's, you know, it's said to be 10 times greater than what Hamas stored up for their attack. And, and according to the intel, uh, they're preparing to invade northern Israel, not unlike the October 7 attack, uh, which happened on Israel's southern border. According to one report, Hezbollah has 10 times the firepower of Hamas with a total military force of 50,000 people and up to 5,000 elite troops ready to storm across the border. And not only that, but they also have more than 200,000 rockets and guided missiles and drones which are currently being stored in their terrorist tunnels there. And, and according to Lieutenant Colonel Zahavi, who served for 15 years in the Israel Defense Forces Intelligence Corps, Hezbollah may now have enough weapons to overwhelm the Iron Dome as well as the David's Sling air defenses, which have, up to this point, been used to protect Israeli towns and cities from missiles and drones. And according to her research, the October 7 attack was simply a test run or, or even a template for the invasion that Hezbollah is preparing to carry out there on the northern border of Israel. And with that being the case, you know, I can't help but to wonder if yesterday's preemptive strike on southern Lebanon actually thwarted Hezbollah's invasion of Israel. Well, as we continue to watch this conflict ramping up there in the Middle East, we can rejoice in knowing that the God of Israel has already provided us with prophetic insight, which presents us with divine intelligence regarding the future outcome of this conflict. As a matter of fact, it's in the 83rd Psalm where a seer named Asaph informs us about the days when the enemies that surround the state of Israel will form a military confederacy, all with the goal of cutting them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. And listen, as they attempt to take the, for themselves the pastures of God for their own possession, they're going to quickly discover that their military might is completely insufficient against the true and living Lord. According to the seer Asaph, the Lord is going to defend Israel by blowing them away like chaff before the wind. Not only that, but the Lord is going to pursue them with his tempest and frighten them with his storm as the mountains are set ablaze by the power of the Almighty. And with all this in mind, I should remind you that we've been called to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, let's also pray for the people on both sides of this conflict that they might all realize that the Lord Jesus is the only hope that we have for achieving peace in the Middle East as well as the rest of the earth. At the same time, we must also realize that the nations who rage and engage in vain plans against the King of Kings, they're eventually going to find themselves on the receiving end of the Lord's righteous wrath. And with that being the case, the compassionate Christian ought to encourage every unbeliever to realize that our Creator is preparing this world for the second coming of Christ Jesus. That's right. There's coming a day when the King of Kings will return. And it's at that point in time when he will rule and reign over the earth with a rod of iron from the throne of King David. And so rather than getting caught up in all the evil schemes of political rulers who are trying to build their own empires here, Christians have been called to accomplish our role as the ambassadors of heaven as we prepare the world for the return of the king. And with this as the goal, I encourage every Christian, let's warn the world about the day when the armies of heaven will invade this earth 
And at that point in time, they will destroy the enemies of Israel. And knowing that Christ Jesus will be leading this military campaign, well, let's encourage every unbeliever to make peace with our Messiah before it's too late. And as we prepare the world for the return of our Messiah, the Lord Jesus will help us to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.